Julian Assange became a household name in 2010 when he released U.S. classified information about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. He did it through WikiLeaks, the multinational website he founded to gather and release large data sets of restricted government material. His supporters call him a champion of free speech, but the United States sees him as a risk to its national security. In 2012, Ecuador granted Assange political asylum at its embassy in London, and he eventually became an Ecuadorian citizen. Que la conducta irrespetuosa y agresiva de señor Julian Assange. But his seven-year stay was shattered by President Moreno's decision to withdraw his protection. And that led to his arrest by British police in April of 2019. Jose Valencia, Ecuador's foreign affairs minister during this episode, explains the events leading to Assange's arrest. What was the tipping point that led Ecuador to revoke his asylum? Well, it was a continuous violation of the international legal instruments, treaties, that govern the political asylum. In this case, Ecuador took into account those different incidents and make a decision, which is a decision that we took in the framework of Ecuadorian and international law. This was a very dramatic exit. It made a lot of headlines. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had to do it that way. Uh, we had received a couple of threats coming from Mr. Assange, and we didn't want to take a risk to uh, have a situation where Mr. Assange or only any other member of the Ecuadorian embassy could be in, in danger. Uh, so that's why we decided to act. And we acted having into account the different procedures and uh, the uh, uh, norms that are in the Vienna Convention on, Diplomatical, on the Diplomatic Relations. That convention regulates the way an embassy is going to work and what to do in very specific special ca cases as this one, as Mr. Assange uh, uh, stay in, in, in our embassy. At what point he was given citizenship, does he still have that? Uh, is his citizenship valid or are there plans to revoke that citizenship? Well, we issue, and I would say we, the government of Ecuador, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, a special legal administrative procedure in order, in order to oversee the uh, citizenship of Mr. Assange. And we found uh, many issues that are not conform to in Ecuadorian law and procedures. And as a result of that, we suspended. Uh, we declared that administrative uh, act as a, 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 an act that should be reviewed by the Ecuadorian uh, uh, judiciary. So now, a judge in Ecuador is taking you know, a view on that matter, and he will be deciding uh, what is the different, uh, you know, aspects that we are uh, asking him to review in order to see if that citation was, was uh, 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 given to him according to the Ecuadorian law. So what would that mean then uh, if a judge does find that he never met the requirements or it wasn't done uh, correctly, then he will no longer he, be a citizen? He could take that decision, but the fact that decision is not really in direct uh, concern, so to say, with regard to the situation of the ending of his asylum. The asylum issue is one issue, and the issue of the uh, citizenship, uh, citizenship of, of Mr. Assange is a different one. So we don't see the, both of them connected in, in a way. The decision of the Ecuadorian government was done regardless of any other consideration that Mr. Assange uh, lack of respect of many uh, uh, norms of these international uh, treaties regarding asylum, and of course, other uh, special protocols that the government of Ecuador issued with regard to that matter. Let's go up to the days and weeks leading up to April of 2019. How long had this been in the process of, of getting him out of the embassy, and how much pressure, if any, was Ecuador under by the United States, the UK, and by Sweden? No. Or is this just Ecuador? We didn't have any pressure. Yeah? We have a different positions 
uh, opposition with regard to uh, the situation of Mr. Assange with the British authorities. As you re may recall, the British uh, tribunals were requesting Mr. Assange to uh, uh, be uh, responsible for breaking the freedom. According to that, they have to go to the tri tribunals. And we, we provide him asylum. That's the whole issue. We didn't have any other uh, country involved. And as we declare, as Ecuador declared with regard to this matter, uh, the only discussion that we have regarding the legal future of Mr. Assange was with Mr. Assange himself, with his lawyers, and with the British legal judiciary authorities. When you look at all the time spent that he spent in London and all the money spent to house him there, do you think it was all worth it? I mean, how much money and resources were spent for Julian Assange? The government of Ecuador at that time considered that the situation that Mr. Assange uh, provided for the government of Ecuador uh, giving him asylum. It was seven years ago, and uh, the Ecuadorian government invested a, a lot of money, uh, important resources, because we wanted to fulfill our obligations under international law. Uh, however, the decision, the final decision to uh, withdraw this asylum to Mr. Assange was taken only into consideration of those breakings, of those uh, lack of attention of Mr. Assange, of the different provisions of the uh, treaties governing political asylum. <music>Negative impact in, in, in our nation, in Ecuador, give us uh, a lot of uh, uh, preoccupation. And uh, we are in contact with the authorities in Colombia. We will we'll, we'll, we'll try to see how can we cope with what happen in the, will happen in the future. We want to be ready to react. The government of Ecuador has all the public uh, officials, uh, uh, especially police and army, ready to uh, defend our sovereignty and especially to combat those illegal groups that may be uh, acting or uh, participating in illegal uh, activities in, in our nation. That's our main concern and we are ready to uh, give a, an, an answer, a direct answer uh, with all the you know legal uh, framework in mind. That's why my president, President Moreno has said we, Ecuador will act within its law in order to uh, deter and uh, avoid those effects to get into our nation and provoke even victims that uh, we are, uh, you know, on that matter, ready to act. Colombia has taken a very hard stance on Venezuela as well, especially when it comes to the FARC and uh, other groups like the ELN. Are you concerned of any kind of escalation or military intervention between Venezuela and Colombia? Our hope is that the situation of the crisis in Venezuela may be uh, solved through uh, peaceful means. Uh, that's our main aspiration. That's our goal, so to say. We believe that's the best uh, you know, way out of, of this crisis. Uh, we hope that that could be done uh, with the participation of all Venezuelans. That also will be done in a framework of full respect for human rights. 
And also, they will take into consideration to such groups as the migrants, which are very vulnerable, and if they are coughed in, in, in the middle of this situation and these tensions, they will be the first to suffer. So those are main concerns from Ecuador with regard to that matter. Minister Valencia, thank you so much for joining us on America's Now. Thank you. Thank you very much.